right here in the flesh. You get it? <laughs> and you start reading. And the miracle starts taking place. That fire of the Holy Spirit, the staff. You thought I was going to forget about that, didn't you? I did too. <laughs> the staff. Psalms 21. 23? Psalm 23. About thy rod and thy staff that come from me. Yep. What does the staff stand for? Moses. He had the staff. Had great powers, miracles, and wonders come out of that staff. The Holy Spirit. The comforter. The staff. The staff touches. My goodness. That flesh and the fire of the Holy Spirit consumes this. That means, how do we know God's talking to us? When we read this word and it buffets our flesh and it consumes that old nasty nature inside of us, you know it's God talking to you Amen. and it's not a false spirit. All these people on TV, not all of them, but many of them, they're sitting there pleased in the flesh and they're speaking things out of here and they're twisting them and they're I mean, gratifying, having to be a better you, be better to yourself. Do this, do that. God loves you like you are. Don't change. You don't have to repent. Everything sounds good to the what? Flesh. But when God's talking to you and the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, what's going to happen? That fiery baptism of the Holy Spirit. What did John the Baptist say? There's one coming after me whose sandals and shoes I'm not able to tie. And he'll baptize you in Holy Ghost and fire. And he'll thoroughly what? Purge his floor. If you're thoroughly being purged this morning, if you're thoroughly being purged as you've been, have you come to Christ, guess what? That means God's talking to you. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, He chastens those He what? He loves. Who's them other sons that don't get chastened? What does it say? They're what? What does it say? <laughs> the ones that don't get chastened are called, I'm going to let y'all say it this time. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> Bastards. Y'all don't have me cuss out here. <laughs> but that's what he said. Y'all yeah, didn't want to cuss. Oh, Hold the scripture. Those that are not chasing, that love the flesh, that love to live in the flesh, they become bastards. But when this word of God comes out and you're reading this and it buffets your flesh, you go, wow, it's tearing me apart. And what I believe, that's God talking to you. I'm telling you, it'll thin out a crowd when the Lord starts speaking. Amen. Amen. When he came down on the holy mount, praise God, and talked to Moses, the rest of them ran off and said, Moses, you hear from God, not us. Uh -huh. yeah. You hear from him. Let, him. let him buffet your flesh for a while. You just bring the word to us and we'll just choose if we receive it or not. Yeah. That sounds for me. That's what they're doing today. Preacher, you go up there on the hill and you talk to God and then when you give us a message, we'll choose whether it's from you or God. Yes, we'll say, well, we might receive and we might not. But when God talks to you personally by the Holy Spirit, that fire is coming out of that rock. And it's going to consume that flesh by the unleavened cakes. Amen. That's a revelation, y'all. I'm telling you, if you go home and pray about it, the Lord will show you the same thing. It's amazing. He's been tearing down all that stuff inside of us in the church today. Why? That's the first work. He hadn't even got to Gideon's army yet. He's talking to Gideon. He's talking to us personally. He's not talking about the ministry he's called you to. He's talking to Gideon right here before Gideon ever received an army to go against the people that were destroying the people of God. To go against the enemies, he had to first, what? His flesh had to be consumed. That's how he knew. God's talking to me. Because it's not pleasing to what I, what I want to hear. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes I'll be preaching up here and it's not pleasing to what you want to hear and you kind of get aggravated. <laughs> or you get mad at it. Well, I, I believe something different. I believe this and that and the other. Well, our flesh may believe something, but we got to what? Submit to the word of the living God. Amen. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So it says, verse 22, and, then, and when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto you, fear not, you shall not die. You know the Lord still speaks to us. What is the flesh? Some of it, I, I feel that some of us don't know what I'm talking about. Go with me to Galatians chapter 5. 5.22. I was going to skip that part, but the Lord said, Don't skip it because so many people don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I said, Okay. <laughs> We'll dive deeper in there. Some of y'all may know what I'm speaking of, and some of us don't go that deep enough to know, or they just kind of touch the surface of the Word of God. But I'm telling you, flesh, Galatians 5 19, excuse me. Yep. 5 19. 
Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Y'all there with me? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions. What did I say about that division a while ago? Remember all that division? Everybody thinks it's okay. Oh, it's okay. We're all divided. Seditions. That's part of the flesh. That's the reason why we all divided. Man's pride. Heresies. And that's what happened next. Start making up what we think about God's words. Indians, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such a like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, and they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's strong. Yeah, now you see why the flesh must be consumed and you can't dwell therein. You see, that was the first sign that God's talking to you. When you get saved and the Holy Spirit starts loving on you and showing you the beautiful work at the cross and what Jesus did, He's also going to start destroying your precepts of life. We all may wear some things and do some things and act a certain way. We think we're pretty good because we were raised that way or we hung around friends that did the same thing. I've been spitting and chewing and drinking and doing dope and doing it. Everything's normal. This is, I, I was raised this way. But when you get saved, what happens? The Holy Spirit starts doing what? He starts consuming that, telling you that's wrong. Evil. Come out and be ye separate from it. Making my case now? Well, these things are not in the church, are they? Every one of these things are in the church. Do we wonder why the anointed of God is not dwelling in the church as a whole? Do we wonder what happened to the mighty anointing of God? Does anybody ever wonder? Have you ever got saved and said, Jesus, I believe you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, but I'm like Gideon. What has happened? Where's the moving and operation of the Holy Spirit these days? Where's the Holy Spirit preaching and teaching? Even when we sing, there, there's something missing sometimes. What has happened is because the flesh is still on the throne in our lives and our own precepts that haven't been consumed. There's still people, what I call spiritual, what is called fictional vampires. You know, they made up a character called a vampire. And the vampire has a deep perception on everybody else's life. I think anybody that's been born, I guess around 19, 20 on up knows what a vampire is. Because we've had TV tell you what a vampire is, right? A fictional vampire? Well, they're spiritual vampires. There's people in the church, just like a vampire, that have deep perception, supposedly, and deep discernment on everybody else's heart. You ever notice you watch one of them old crazy movies or read one of them nutty books, which I don't recommend? 